Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisan Zavul, and in this tutorial I'm going to have a look at what I think is probably one of the most exciting add-on features I've found in quite a long time, and I actually only discovered this about a week ago. So let's get into this and let's see what it does. So if you've been following the channel then you know that we've been looking at Machine Tools, which is a free add-on that you can get from Gumroad. You can get it from Blender Marketplace as well. If you do, it's gonna cost you a dollar because they have a minimum payment. And whenever I make videos, I like to make sure that I've got all my research done. And to do that, I go and have a look at the documentation for any add-on to just see if there's any features that I might not be aware of or that I haven't been using even though I've been using other features in the tool. Now this is something you can easily do yourself. As you can see, all I've done is gone to the add-ons and then found the relevant add-on. And all you need to do is click the documentation button and that will take you to the website that has all of the documentation. And you can find the documentation for most paid add-ons here. Otherwise you might just need to go into Google and type in the name of the add-on and documentation. Now while I'm here, what we need to do to make sure this works is we need to have the Align tool working. I've got a separate video talking about the Align tool, but it also has this as a feature which I wasn't even aware about until I was looking at the documentation. And a few people commented on one of my previous videos looking at machine tools about how surprised I seemed to be at one of the things that I worked out you could do. That was nothing compared to this. I mean, when I found this feature, I uh, swore a bit, played about it for an hour, cursed that I didn't know about it earlier because it would save so much time and various other things. So yeah, th this is pretty exciting in terms of a feature and I hope you think so too. So previous on the channel, we made this sci-fi armored gauntlet. It's only very simplistic in terms of the way it's being constructed, but there's a tutorial looking at that in the top right hand corner and in the comments. So you're very welcome to have a look at that if you didn't see that video and you want to make this but we're gonna use this as a demonstration of how this feature works. And once I've done that, I'll talk about it in a bit more detail. I just wanted to talk about the basics of this. So let's add some extra detail to this. So let's say I wanted to print this a little bit larger than I normally would do, because this is normally for a 28 millimeter model, so it's pretty tiny. But let's say I wanted to just print the gauntlet much larger, or I was just doing another project. So we're gonna add some detail here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to add some texture or some grip on the inside of the finger. And maybe this is something like some sort of haptic feedback that senses what you're grabbing so that the person doesn't apply too much pressure. So all I'm doing is taking a bit of this geometry, copying it, and then I'm going to be using hard ops. If you don't have hard ops, you could do this manually. It would take a little bit longer to make this texture. I don't know how to actually pronounce this. Knurl, knurling, not sure. Either way, it's this sort of texture that you find on handles, especially if things like weapons like pistols. And then we're gonna to move to the back and we're just going to add a little bit of extra detail as if this was a more ornate gauntlet, maybe for a captain or something like that. And we're just gonna add a little bit of something extra to make it look a little cool. So all I'm gonna do is bevel these edges and then I'm gonna press P to change the profile and we'll make that a concave bevel instead of a convex bevel. And actually, I'll bevel the other edges as well, just to make it look a little bit more rounded. And we've just got a few geometry issues that I'm sorting out to make sure that that's a manifold object. So normally copying these objects onto the other parts of the finger would be a complete pain. They're all different sizes because effectively this is just one object that I've then copied and then copied and shrunk down. And we copied each of the fingers and then made them a bit smaller. They're also rotated around in different ways. So this is gonna be an absolute pain to get right. I mean, it's not that there aren't ways to do it. It's just gonna take a lot of time. Except for this add-on feature does not take a lot of time. It's so fast. So let's do this first, and then we'll talk about the complexity of this in a bit more detail afterwards. So what you have to do is you first need to select the objects that you want to copy. So select one, right clicking, and then shift click the subsequent ones. And you can do as many as you want. The important bit is the last thing that you click while holding shift needs to be the object that you're copying relative to. Everything's gonna work off this last feature. So that's the finger itself because that's the bit that there's multiple copies of. Then you just right click, go to the machine tools which should be at the top of your object context menu and click align relative. And you'll notice that by your mouse you've now got a blue button that says duplicate. And you can still move around Okay, the one thing you can't do is scroll in and out. I'll explain that in a second. And then you just click an object. So for example, I'm gonna click there and you can see it makes this outlined version of what's gonna be copied. And if you shift, you can do this as many times as you want. And each time it's gonna duplicate this object 
or these objects, I should say, and then you just press the space bar to confirm. And look, every single one of them has been scaled the right amount. This one's smaller than this one, so it fits perfectly. They've been aligned, so they've rotated round however much you need them to be rotated. I mean, this is going to save so much time. It is unbelievable. As I said, I couldn't believe I didn't know about this earlier because this would save so much time. Now, I just want to talk about two other features of this, one of which happens automatically and the other that requires a selection to do it, and both are very helpful. So, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to select those two objects, select this one last, and I'm going to press Ctrl and P to parent this to my object. If you don't know what parenting means, there's a video in the top right hand corner about how you can use this and how you can do something really cool with it. So do feel free to check that out. But if I press R, you'll notice that now if I rotate the main object, the things that are parented to it will move with it. So it's a bit like grouping in other programs, but it's a little bit more powerful than that in some ways because it does mean that I can still G and move this object by itself. So now that we've parented this, we're gonna have a look at these two other bits. So what I'm gonna do now is shift select that, that, and then our main object, right click, relative align, but this time, Instead of using the duplicate feature, I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel up and change this to instance. And now if I shift click each of these, it's firstly in green to let you know that you're doing it, so you're not gonna get confused. And then when we press space, it has done exactly the same thing. Now I'm gonna talk about these two bits in turn. The first one had nothing to do with it being instancing. This works in either way. What's really great about this tool is not only does it know how to align everything and how to scale it, but also it recognizes that if these objects were parented to that initial object, it will now, when it makes the copy, parent them to the version that it's copying to. So if I click R, you'll notice that these are parented to this new object, which is, again, just a massive time saver. Now the instancing is a little bit more complicated, but what this does is it means that each of these copies is still linked to this first version. So if I shift an S and move my cursor to selected and then tab into vertex mode, I'm gonna control an A, bring in a quad sphere, S to scale it down a lot, so somewhere around there. And then I'm just gonna move this around. In fact, let's shift and Z so we can see where this is. So let's move that somewhere like there, scale a bit more. And we've got something like, I don't know, a jewel or some other feature on this armor. And you'll notice as I was doing that, it did it to all of the other ones. In fact, let's G and move that in a little bit. It's done this to all the other copies because they're instances of this first one. And what that means is it's really quick to do these modifications and apply to everything else. So again, a great feature that makes this really, really useful so that if you decide you want to change something later, you can add it in and it adds it into everything else. Not that the copying process took long, it's just something that you might want to have. So again, another great feature. Now I just wanna spend a bit of time talking about how this works and some of the positives and negatives of this quickly. And then I'm gonna talk about another feature of this or another situation where I think this is gonna be amazingly useful. So I've just got a basic cube here. I'm just gonna change this cube up a little bit just to demonstrate a couple of things. So I'm just gonna bevel that and actually let's just leave it at that. And I'm gonna bring out the end panel and gonna talk about a few things that are very important. So the first thing that's very important is that this initial item needs to be at scale one when you start copying it. So you need to, if you've made this, let's say a bit bigger, and now the scale is not at one, you need to press control and A and apply the scale for this. So that's really key. You also need to have applied the rotation, I think. So then if we make a copy of this, let's just bring that there, and I'm gonna press S and scale this on the Z axis. And then I'll just do one more, Shift and D, and I'm not gonna do anything with that, I'm just gonna make that larger. So we're gonna have a look at how this works. In fact, let's bring that over there. And then I'm going to come here and add in my objects. And just to make something easy to see, I'm gonna bring in a quad sphere, just because quad spheres are quite useful to look at, because obviously it's a sphere. So let's just do one there. I'm gonna Shift and D one there. And then let's, I don't know, bring in a cube. I'm gonna make that a bit smaller. Vertex mode, and then let's just shrink those in. So we've got three objects that we're gonna copy. So same process, shift click, final click on the one we want to copy relative to, right click, machine tools, relative align, and I'm just gonna duplicate these. So one there, one there, space, 
and we've copied them. Now, as we can see, this simple shift in size where we've scaled everything equally because we just used S, we didn't assign an axis. Everything is copied exactly the same. It's just been scaled up. This object has a scale of 2.194, which means that these objects are all scaled up okay to be much larger in fact they're 2.194 times the objects that are over here attached to this one now this one's a bit more complicated and we can see this best in the spheres you'll notice because we just scaled this on the z-axis here the object has also been scaled on the z-axis which has caused a problem with it being this rounded shape so we do need to be careful with this feature depending on what we want to copy otherwise we're going to have some problems now there is one other thing that this doesn't do which would be amazingly cool. And I just want to talk about this before we go on to the other situation where I see this being really useful, is if I just start this again and shift A and let's say bring in a cube. Now, before I do anything else, I'm gonna control and A, apply the scale. I'm gonna shift and D and copy that one over and let's scale it down a bit just so we can see that function. And then, oh, actually let's do one more thing. I'm gonna control and A, I'm gonna bring in a plane I'm going to scale that up a little bit. And let's go into edge mode, select those two edges, control E, let's subdivide that and subdivide it a few more times. And then I'm going to go to the modifier panel, add modifier. I'm going to shrink wrap this to this object. So it's now being shrink wrapped and I'm gonna add another modifier and solidify it so that we've got this on this surface. And then let's take this object, select that one, and then control and minus on the number pad so that we've got this difference boolean. So we already know that the align relative tool is going to copy any parenting information over. It does seem to have the ability to look at relationships between objects. But at the moment, if I select these two, then this, and then align relative and select that space, what's happened here is a bit more of a mess. It firstly has got the object here, so I can still Boolean it out, but it hasn't recognized that there is a Boolean going on here. So it'd be great if this tool could have a look at this and go, oh, I've got a Boolean and it's for one of the objects that's being copied and then reassign that to be Booleaning this. I mean, think how quick that would be to add these changes. The other thing is that we've got, and you can't even see it, that's because it's now over here, is that this shrink wrap is still targeting the original cube so as well as looking at the object that's being copied too, it'd be so cool if this could look at the objects being copied and see if this has any functions that are targeting the original object and then transfer over. Because if you think about that sort of detailing that I was adding to the glove earlier, if this was a curved surface and we wanted to curve it to this, that'd be really cool. I mean, don't get me wrong, we could apply this and then do the whole thing and it would work fine. It would just be nice to be able to work non-destructively on this. So that would be really cool. And if that ever happens, machine, you're amazing already, but that would be the best thing in the world. Not that I think they're gonna ever watch this. So what's this final use that I think is gonna be really good for this? Well, I wanna to come to this. This is a very old model that I made. In fact, this is actually the first model I made other than moving a cube around in Blender. It's this massive suit of sci-fi armor. Some of you might recognize the design. It's still up for sale on Colts actually. And it took me forever because I didn't really know what I was doing. It was the first thing I ever did on Blender. I can't believe how long this actually took me. I could do it so much faster now. But either way, it's a good demonstration for this. So normally when you're gonna make things and they're gonna be copied over, notice that the arms aren't the same. This one's got this huge power fist glove on it. This one's much smaller. It, but this leg's gonna be copied over to the other side. Now normally I'd do this just using hard ops. So I'd select all the items that I want to copy over select the thing that I want to be centered around, Alt X, and I want to modify, so I'll just modify it over, really quick. And obviously if you don't have hard ops, you can do this using a mirror modifier that's targeting that. It's just a quicker way of doing it. And that's all great, but actually this isn't that useful in this sort of model, because I'm gonna to want to move around these different parts, and at the moment they're all connected. So if I, let's say, R and Y that, okay, notice that these have been parented, but it moves everything because this is one object. So that's not the most useful thing in the world. So we can sort this out, like we can apply this, go into vertex mode, select P, separate by loose parts, and then you've got this one here and then this one here, but now the 
pivot points in like the wrong location because it stays in the same place as the old one. Like it takes a while to sort this out. Now if I just undo everything, what's really cool about this is say I select this object, Shift and D to duplicate it, Y to keep it on the Y axis, S and Y and then minus one. What I've now got is basically a mirrored version of this. I'm just gonna move it over to the correct place except for I've mirrored it by using the scale. So I press S, Y to constrain it on the Y axis, and then minus one to flip it round. And because this has used the scale feature, now what I can do is select all of those objects. Notice this is taking a little bit longer than doing it with hard ops, but not by much. Right click, align relative, click, space, and it's done it. Now, notice that is slightly slower than doing it the hard ops way using alt x and mirroring across this object but importantly taking maybe a second longer now all of these objects are separate and again it's kept the parenting so ry i can now move that round ry i can move that ry i can move that so it's kept all of my different parenting to allow me to move this around notice this isn't a rigged model but it's really quick and easy to do because of this align relative feature. So, I mean, that's pretty cool on something that you can do really quickly and save yourself a load of time. So hopefully you're as excited about this feature as I am. I mean, honestly, I think this is absolutely amazing and there are a couple of extra bits that it could have, but seriously, even as it is, this is amazing for something that is free. Now, as I said, I've only just looked at this recently. In fact, I only found out about it a bit over a week ago. So maybe I've missed something out. Can you think of any functionality of this or any situations where you could use this and it will be amazingly useful? Please do say in the comments section because I'm just trying to get my head around this new feature as well. And I'd love to hear some other ideas of what people are planning to do with this. Have a great day, guys.